hope everyone did well on exam number two. Your grade should be posted within one week of taking the exam, and then the hard copy of your exam can be picked up in N181 over at the South City campus anytime the Lab Aid is present. Um, if you have not already picked up exam one, it is also in the cabinet in, um, in room N181. Please make sure you pick it up before the last day of the semester. They do get thrown out or they get uh, shredded if you don't pick them up. Our next lecture is on packaging and shipping weights. This starts the third and final section of our class. We're going to learn how to create quotes or estimates for printing jobs. And for the next three or four weeks, we'll learn all the different skills necessary to complete that final quote or estimate. And then the last week of the semester, we'll put it all together in one giant estimate or quote. Our objectives for today's lecture include identifying various shipping containers, calculating how many pieces of a particular item will fit into a box so we can figure out how many boxes we have to purchase. We'll calculate the number of containers required for packaging, and then we'll estimate the weight of our products that are going to be shipped. Every item that is manufactured must be packaged for shipping. Sometimes the manufactured items are shipped to other manufacturers for further processing. Sometimes they are shipped to a distributor or a store for selling, and other times they are shipped directly to a customer. No matter what the final destination is, every item that is manufactured must be packaged for shipping in some way. So the first option is that, let's say that we're manufacturing pens in China. Um, they're not going to put them in individual boxes. They'll probably put them in giant shipping containers and ship them across the ocean, like in the bottom right-hand corner of our uh, slideshow here. Um, once they get to the United States and they are distributed to um, retailers, let's say that those pens are going to go to Office Depot, they'll put them on pallets or skids, depending on how you, uh, how you look at it. And on those pallets or skids, they'll have multiple boxes. And when they get to the actual retailer, uh, they'll be broken down into smaller boxes so the consumer can buy just one pen if they'd like to. There are many uh, different types of shipping containers. We're going to talk about three specific types. Uh, first, there's pallets. Um, you could have unpackaged items that are stacked on a wood pallet, like in the top right-hand corner here. The pallet is the wood at the bottom, and then you just stack things on top. Um, usually, they're wrapped with shrink wrap. And uh, the risk of denting something or damaging it is, is a little greater than if you used option number two here which is skid packaging, which is also called using Gaylords. This is a Gaylord box. It's a box that is as big as the skid, and you put things inside of it. So if we were going to package um, a bunch of boxes, like these fragile boxes, um, we might just put them on a skid. But if we had a bunch of books that weren't in boxes, we would wrap them in a Gaylord first and then uh, put them on the skid. And last but not least, you can always put things in boxes. And boxers come in various standard sizes and types. There's a single wall and double wall cart, um, cartons. Um, you could have a very small box that's big enough for one pen, or you could have a big box like this where you could fit 500 pens inside. 